Hello everyone and welcome to another Star Wars The Old Republic video and patch 5.8 has hit and I was hoping that I could start off kind of doing videos again. It's been a month since my last upload so I was hoping I could start videos up again with the new pack opening. That would be a good way to start again but unfortunately the pack is not ready for release. So we do have the pack actually added to collections not officially as a pack but just the items have been added under the recently added tab in collection so we can actually check them out and that's what we'll be doing in this video I'll just be briefly going through the items uh, showing you guys the animations of the weapons and all that good stuff and just talking about it a little bit because this has got to be by far the most exciting cartel pack with regards to weapons I mean I am beyond excited there are a lot of weapons here that I'm probably going to start using on my characters just because they're so cool and um there are a few other interesting features about the pack that I want to discuss kind of briefly and I won't make it too long. However, I do want to also let you guys know just a quick update on the channel. As I said, it's been a month since my last upload. I do have a lot of really interesting video ideas and stuff I want to do. I just haven't had the time to sit down and make any of them. But I'm going to start again now. School's lightening up, especially at mid-April. I'll be totally done with school. I'll have a lot of time to make videos. So uh, now, you know, it's going to be a little bit slow with the uploads. But nonetheless, when there's something interesting to talk about, I will indeed make a video. And so let's talk about this cartel pack here and what we've got. So we've got the three armor sets finally, and we can take a look at what they look like in game we have the sith cultist as the gold armor set now if i'm you know as i'm previewing it here you might notice not the crazy nicest thing but one thing i really like about this is kind of how it's already got the black and black dye so anyone who kind of wanted a really dark armor set and doesn't quite have enough money to shell out for a black and black dye can use this armor set especially the chest plate and then they can just unify color and that will basically make whatever armor set they're using black i think or something along those lines. So that's kind of cool. The helmet itself is, is pretty neat as well. Um, so I, just in general, as a gold armor set, I think it's pretty solid. I mean, it's not anything great, uh, but it's, it's not anything too bad either. I think the one a lot of people are actually more excited about is the Force Apprentice armor set. Now, this one is really nice. I can d definitely dig it. For, for Jedi, especially female Jedi characters, this is really nice. Um, yeah, just the upper body armor is cool. All the supplementary stuff is kind of cool as well. The boots are nice. The gloves are nice. So all of that combined, it's a really decent silver armor set. I definitely could see that not only being a really nice drop from the pack, but also selling for pretty affordable prices on the GTN. So no need to really open the pack for this one. It, it's definitely going to go down. It's going to be a pretty common drop. Then with regards to the pilot armor set here, um, yeah, I'm not digging it too much. I mean, sure, smugglers, gunslingers, those guys will probably like this armor set, but I would just never use it. At, I don't know. I... I I guess it's because I don't really play smugglers or gunslingers. I haven't even finished their class stories. Like, so I, that, that's probably why I'm not too kind of drawn by this armor set. But I can see smugglers kind of liking this one. So nothing too special there either. I think what's the highlight of this pack are the weapons. And so we'll go on into talking about the weapons right now and showing you guys that. So firstly, we'll look at the Dark uh, Honor Guard's Curved Vibroblade. Um, this one is a really nice one. Uh, there's two key things I like about it a lot. The first one is it sheaths at the waist and I really like those swords that are kind of small and compact and sheath at, at your waist because it just kind of has a better animation when you draw it and also it doesn't a clip as bad with like capes and stuff. I mean it still clips a little bit but if you have it drawn on your back and you have an armor set with a cape it just looks terrible. So um, I kind of like it, uh, for it for that reason. Also I really like the animation of that little blue, um, what do you call it, like that purple uh, electric effect on the on the blade. That's really nice. It, it does kind of go away when you sheath it and then activates again when you unsheath it. So that's really cool. I definitely see myself using this on my um, on my Sith. It is gold rarity so I'm glad it's not platinum. But the second sword I'm going to show you guys here is actually platinum and this surprised me. I was almost a hundred percent sure this was going to be gold rarity and this is the um, the Dark Honor Guards kind of vibroblader or electroblader or whatever it's called. It's like the, um, it's that whip that is used in the movies, but it doesn't obviously have the whip effect. That would be a little bit too ambitious for Swotar, but it is still a nice weapon, but I just don't see it as being a platinum rarity, honestly. It's not that nice. This also sheaths at your waist, which is cool, and the only actual effect it has is it extends a little bit when you unsheath it. And it does, like the picture, I'll show you guys the picture here. The picture makes it look really cool. I mean, you're looking at this and you're thinking this is a unique looking weapon with some really cool kind of effects in, in between this, uh, whatever you call it, the serrated blades or, or things like that. It's, it's really cool when you look at it in the photo, but when we actually look at it in game, it doesn't quite have that same effect. I mean, if I zoom in here, you can see it does have a little bit of that purple electric effect in between the blades. It's just not visible enough to actually make it 
stick out or make it flashy. And so that's one reason I don't quite think this is worth being a platinum rarity weapon, but it's gonna be platinum nonetheless. I don't think that matters too much because if it's platinum, that means probably most likely most people won't even have access to it. I mean, it's either going to sell for millions of credits on the GTN or just not really drop from the cartel pack. So there's not much point in it in discussing the design too much. I just personally would have thought it would be better as a gold weapon. Uh, let me know what you guys think. I just don't. I was surprised by it being platinum. And then the other um, actually item I want to quickly talk about which I was really surprised about being platinum was the cybernetic Varactyl. If you guys look here, this is actually a platinum mount. Um, that surprised me completely. I have no clue why. I mean, it's a very nice mount. I'll show you guys the design here and looking around it. It's really cool. I mean, they did a good job with, with taking kind of the base model design of a Varactyl and kind of adding on it to make it unique and different. Because we have so many mounts in the game that have that base model. We have Sykes, uh, Cam Lizards, Varactyls, um, and a whole host of other mounts that just have that similar design with regards to the way they move and stuff. And so they did a good job of improving upon that. Just making it platinum once again doesn't make much sense to me. I mean, this is definitely something that screams just being gold even if, or even silver. Like, it's not really platinum. Um, so that was just my opinion on it once again. Anyways, that, those two things surprised me. What didn't surprise me was the vented, unstable saber being platinum. Uh, but one thing is, I'm going to preview it for you guys here. The design really grew on me. I actually really, really like this weapon. I can see myself using it over the Unstable Peacemaker Saber. And if you, and for most of you guys, it's going to be platinum. It's going to sell for millions. I would say it's kind of a good thing to buy. I mean, if you're if you're into that Saber, the design grew on me. Um, the blade is thin, but it's not thin enough that it's as ugly as the Unstable Arbiter Saber. I mean, it's still kind of thick enough to make it look good. It has a lot of the really cool Unstable effect. It's vented. I really like the design of the hilt. Definitely something that would look good on a Sith. We don't know what the sound will be like though, and that is usually a make or break for a lot of people. So we don't know the sound, but I believe it's going to sound just like the other Unstable Sabers. I don't see it doing really anything different with it but we can always hope and we can see when we actually get it in game now this commenting on the cartel pack in general oh wait i forgot one thing whoops i forgot the unstable staff i just kind of skipped over that one that one is really cool and i've already talked about this in the previous uh videos it is just a really nice weapon i mean it's cool i can see assassins using it i'm probably going to use it on my assassin it just got this really cool um effect with the with the purple um, electric blade at the bottom and also the unsheathing effect where the bottom of the hilt extends like all of that is just really cool um well done on this weapon it's good it's gold unfortunately it was actually a data mine as a silver item if you looked at it and the preview on the pts it was silver i was really excited about that but now it's gold so uh whatever now just talking about the cartel pack in general because this is kind of what i want to talk about at the end of this video um it is quite clearly incomplete. I mean, we don't, I mean, if this is just a cartel pack itself, it would be a very weird cartel pack. You only have like a, a few silver items. Everything else is gold or platinum. So there are some possible explanations for that. The first one is we might see some of these actually as a direct sale item on the cartel market rather than being in a cartel pack. I know that will make some people happy because then they won't have to really gamble for it, uh, which is going to be really great. The other thing or possible explanation is we could be seeing another change to cartel packs, the way that they're delivered to us. And the reason I say that is because in the roadmap that we received from Keith only a few weeks back, they mentioned big changes that were going to happen to the cartel market. Now, those big changes were supposed to come with patch 5.8 and they were supposed to come with a dev post that would explain them. We got neither of those. So that makes me assume that the changes are big enough that they still need to work on them a little bit and we're probably going to see them next week. And so we're probably also going to see a dev post coming this week that explains some of the changes that they're making. And my hypothesis is one of the changes is going to be two cartel packs and once again changing the way that they deliver them. Now we also got this really interesting data mined photo uh, of, of what looks like to, to be a new design for cartel packs. Now as you guys can see in this photo it says times 10 which means whatever this pack is gives you 10 cartel packs. And the first thing that comes to my mind is this seems to be a pack that kind of recycles old items. We've seen this time and time again with the grand packs, which are usually just packs that just stuff in a lot of old items and give it back to us in, in a different form. But what's interesting to note about this is this pack actually contains the newer items. I mean, you have the um, defined vented or the unstable vented lightsaber right at the top there. So actually what this might mean is now it looks like maybe what the cartel packs are going to look like are... Um, 
kind of have some new items, but also some old items thrown in. So um, that, that's just my hypothesis. Don't, you know, get, you know, if, if you don't like that change, don't be too angry about it. I don't know if that's true, but that's just what I'm assuming based on the fact that we have a very few number of items added to collections and also based on this image. That's what it looks like. So it looks like it's going to be some sort of cartel pack where new items are gold or platinum and then they throw in some of the other kind of silver, bronze, maybe gold items from uh, previous cartel packs that were very popular that, that are no longer um, really accessible in the game. Uh, that might be their new approach. I have no clue why this pack is only giving 10 cartel packs, so that's something that doesn't really make much sense to me. Nonetheless, we'll find out more in this coming week and hopefully we'll see the new cartel pack hit in whatever form it's going to come uh, next Tuesday. So hopefully we'll be able to do a pack opening then and see what happens. But anyways, just my opinions. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section below. And since these items are so awesome, I'm really hoping that if I get uh, a lot of good items from the pack openings I do, I'll do a giveaway with them. I'll probably be opening more than one hyper crate uh, maybe something closer to like two three maybe even four just to see if i can get a lot of good stuff and then we could actually look at doing a giveaway for them uh, because i know a lot of people won't have access to this stuff and i'd love to just give it away to some people who are really excited about getting them and so we'll i'll, I'll see what i can do with that but hopefully we just get the pack next week and we can do something cool with them hope you guys enjoyed the video and i will see you guys in the next one